Hello everybody out there in Facebook, Kids Help Revolution Facebook world, everybody in the private uh, Facebook page, nice to see you, and just regular old uh, Kids Help Revolution page. Anyway, it's nice to be back with you guys again this week with another episode of the School Snack series, and today we're making up kind of a special little treat. Um, Easter break is coming up on us, and oftentimes I know that means at school there's sometimes little parties and uh, you know school break parties and all kinds of stuff where the kids are bringing in treats or they're bringing in their uh, Easter chocolate eggs or cream eggs or all of those things that our kiddos. Uh, can't have because we're trying to uh, improve their health through their diet and that means we're eliminating all these processed sugars and we're getting rid of a lot of the preservatives and the other ingredients that we don't want in their diets in terms of supporting their health. So what are we going to do? We don't want our kiddos to be sitting there and feeling left out and not having anything special and so this recipe is perfect for that. I don't know if I can get it on both cameras at once but I think I can get it on them separately so I'm going to show you the group here and I posted a picture on Facebook and Instagram. These are little uh, marshmallows that I've done in little bunny rabbit um, molds so and I've painted them this little blue color without using any food coloring at all whatsoever. So these little guys are gut healthy, they're 100% natural and it's going to be something that your kid really enjoys and really loves and gets to have a good time and and participate in all of those sort of uh, traditions that you might have already established and you're wondering how you're going to do that. A client of mine just recently asked me that, how, you know, what are we going to do for, for the Easter egg hunt? Like, what are we going to use for that? So this is a great little thing to have. You can have these little marshmallows and I have always used these fun little um, Easter eggs that you can kind of snap together like so. And so I put the marshmallow treats or whatever inside the eggs and hide those around the house. And then when my little guy finds them, he has these little treats inside that he can dig out. So that's kind of a fun way to do it. It's also, you could send it to school like this too. Why not? That'd be pretty fun for your child, right? So what's in these little marshmallows? We're going to talk about it today and more than me demonstrating it, I'm going to show you some of the things you're going to need because there is some time of just standing and letting this be working in your, uh, oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time today with thinking and speaking at the same time. Your mixer. They need to mix for some time in order to bring them up into fluffy marshmallows. So instead of me just standing here with you for 10 minutes holding on to the loud mixer and not being able to talk, I thought we'd just talk about the recipe and then of course I will always post it. Recipes will be posted uh, always in our private group. You can find those in the file section guys if you haven't been able to find them before. You go into the file section of this page in the uh, private group and you'll find all of the recipes from all of the school snack series we've done. So look, I think there's 21 different recipes in there right now. If you don't want to have to bother doing that, you can join the community, give me your email address just over on kidshelprevolution.com. So go to kidshelprevolution.com and there's a little tab, join the community. All I need is your name and your email address. And then every week I will send you the school snack series recipes right straight into your inbox. So couldn't be easier for you. There's always lots of good ideas and inspiration um, going on in that community as well. So great place to be. So let's talk about these marshmallows and what makes them healthier than your average marshmallow. So these guys are made uh, with honey. So this is the sweetener that we're using instead of corn syrup. And you don't necessarily need to use raw honey for this particular recipe because you are heating it to quite a high temperature. So you will be killing off the natural enzymes that we love in the raw honey. But this is still a far more natural, healthy option to the highly processed genetically modified high fructose corn syrup that you find in most commercially available marshmallows. Now the other thing is most commercially available marshmallows will have gluten in them uh, and even if they are gluten free they're going to have other kinds of stabilizers and preservatives and all kinds of stuff in them that we really don't want to be having in our diets especially if we don't have to. You know maybe 
If your child's health isn't really a big deal, then once in a while, maybe you can get away with that. But if you can whip these up and it seriously takes like 15 minutes to do, why not? Then you've got this beautiful homemade treat. Your little kiddos can participate in making them, which they usually really enjoy doing, especially putting on the little faces. And it's a really special way to celebrate your holidays without having to derail your health goals and the things that you're working on for your child. So honey, this recipe is GAP approved, sort of. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it has everything in it that is allowed on the GAP diet, but strictly speaking, Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride uh, doesn't love the idea of using the collagen powders and the gelatin powders um, in the introductory stages of the diet. So if you are in the intro stages of the diet, you know, maybe this recipe isn't the best one. However, with that said, if you're starting and you're, or you've been in the introductory stages of the diet for a while and the holiday is coming up and you would really like a little treat for your child to have or you're worried that they're gonna, you know, end up eating something that they shouldn't, then this is a way better option for them than having one of the commercially processed marshmallows or other treats that they might get. So, you know, uh, Strictly speaking, not intro diet, but I think, you know, it's a pretty safe bet. So all we've got in here really is gelatin, honey, filtered water, a good quality uh, vanilla extract, or if you have the vanilla powder or vanilla bean, you could scrape that in. If you are on the GAPS intro diet, you'll have to leave out the vanilla extract, or you can boil it for a little while to get rid of the alcohol in it. It doesn't taste, it doesn't really make a huge difference if you leave it out, I find. Um, and then into this one to give them this fun little funky blue color that you can see in these little guys, I have added in some blue-green algae. So I just have some blue-green algae capsules here. Uh, and so this, these are great for detoxification. They help us with uh, pulling, you know, things like heavy metals and stuff like that and just eliminating them from the body. So we're adding that in, it's not gonna have a huge detox because there's only two capsules in the whole recipe, but it is more supportive to the body rather than being detrimental to the body like a blue food coloring would be. So we can get that fun blue color by just adding in a very natural, healthy product. Uh, and then we've also, of course, got a little bit, a pinch of sea salt in there and the sea salt is going to just pop up the flavor a little bit. So. Those are the ingredients, really basic, simple stuff that go into these marshmallows. And then just a little bit of equipment that you're gonna need. So in order to make these, you will need a candy thermometer. If I have done it without a candy thermometer because mine broke once uh, and my little guy was begging me for marshmallows for a camping trip he was going on. So I have done it without it, but you, you know, if this is the first time that you're gonna try making these, get one of these on Amazon or pop out to Michael's and buy one. They're not hugely expensive. And once you try this recipe, you're gonna do it a lot. So, you know, you can take these camping, you can roast these on the campfire, you can make, uh, you know, gut healthy s'mores with these. You're gonna wanna make them a few times after you try out this recipe. So investing in one of these little guys is really worth it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your water and your honey into a pot and you're gonna bring it to a boil, and this goes into your pot to measure the temperature, okay? Now, one of the tips that I have for you that's really important is that you use a small pot like this. So when you first put the stuff in, you're gonna think, oh geez, that looks a bit tight, it's a little small, but what you want is for it to come up high enough on your thermometer. If you use too big of a pot, which I've done many times, you're going to be trying to do, you know, tilt it over to measure the temperature and then you're not getting an accurate read on your temperature. Okay. So you want the temperature to come up to about 240 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's sort of what they call the soft ball stage. Now, if you're going to be using molds like I do, I stop a little bit before that. So I stop at about 200 when it's still a little bit more liquidy so that I can get it more easily into my mold. If you're just pouring it out and making like a sheet pan of marshmallows, then go all the way to 240. 
And the recipe that I use is adapted from the Mummy Potamus recipe. So it's a great recipe. You could just go straight over to her site, Mummy Potamus, and uh, get a recipe there. I've adapted it slightly for the molds so that it's a little bit more firm in texture. And of course, added in the coloring and things like that. So those are the ingredients. Honestly, it's the simplest thing in the world, you guys. I know that you can do this and I know you're gonna love it. So you just throw all that in the pot and you boil it up, you add your gelatin, and then you need uh, a mixer. So if you're fortunate, you have one of those fancy stand-up mixers and you don't have to stand there and hold it. I don't have one of those. I don't really use them enough to, to um, justify the cost. So I still have my good old fashioned handheld. So you're just going to uh, need one of these for the mixing part. And this really brings the air in and the volume. You know what's amazing about this is you start out with like this much liquid and the gelatin in there and it just puffs up. So make sure you're using a really good sized bowl because it's really going to expand. It's dark when you first put it into the bowl. So don't freak out and think, oh, these are going to look gross. It becomes white as you mix it and bring the air into the recipe. So as you're doing it, you know, bringing air in, scraping down the sides a little bit with your beater, it takes about, you know, the Mummy Potamus um, recipe says about 10 minutes on high. Depends where you live. I sometimes find that it takes a little bit longer than that for mine to set up. Um, and again, depending on if you're making little molds or you're just pouring them out. Okay, so if you're making these little molds, again, you wanna stop before it's forming really hard peaks. You wanna get just a sort of a cream, a nice marshmallow cream, almost like if it was an icing. And you can use this recipe for a really nice icing as well. And that way you can scoop it out and spatula it into your molds and not have too many problems with it. So I'm just gonna grab these little guys out. Of, I have them in the freezer. So you can see, I popped some of them out already. So I have greased this. You could also use something like a tapioca or an arrowroot powder and just put it in so they don't stick too much. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I should have mentioned when the color goes in. And this will all be in the recipe, guys, so don't worry about it. But um, once you've got your uh, marshmallows up and they're kind of coming into a nice fluffy looking cloud, then you're going to add in two capsules of your blue magic powder. Okay, so probably about a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. Okay, and then once you've got this beautiful creamy cloudy looking uh, blue mixture, you can dabble them out into your mold, into your greased or floured mold. And then I put mine in the freezer because I just find they're a little easier to remove. And then I'm just going to show you how that goes because it kind of you can see there, it looks like it's not gonna come out, but it does. Now, these guys, when I put them in, got a fair bit of air in them. So you can see there's a lot of air bubbles on there. That doesn't always happen to me. I don't know why it did this time, but that's okay, it's not a big deal. Okay, so you've got a nice little Easter bunny there, and you can choose whichever side that you'd like. And then what I've done here is just taken water and carob powder. You could use water and uh, raw cacao, whichever, you know, works for you. And let me see if I can get this in. It's pretty straightforward. I take a chopstick, dip it in my water, and make a couple cute little eyes. Need a little bit more on that guy. And you can make a little mouth, a little smiley mouth if you want to. You know, if you want to get really fancy, you could even try little whiskers, whatever you'd like to do. And that's kind of a fun part for the little fingers to get in there and do as well. So, there he is. Pretty cute, right? That looks like a fun little treat to have. Okay, you don't want your child to be chowing down on, you know, 20 of these a day, because they are high in sugar. Um, but, they are, again, a lot better for you than the commercially produced variety. And because we're using honey here. Honey is digested quite high up in the digestive tract, in the small intestine. So it, it's not as much of a problem in terms of it going through and feeding bad bacteria and candida and some of these things that can be a problem for our kiddos. So those are the little bunny ears. And then I also tried these out and I haven't taken these out to see how it's gonna be, but 
these are little half sort of egg molds that I have for chocolate. And I wanted to see if it would work with this, but not really. Nope. It's a bit funky looking. <laughs> so that one didn't work. I mean, my kid will eat it. He'll be perfectly happy to eat it, but it doesn't hold the nice little shape that I was looking for with it. But hey, it never hurts to experiment, right? It's all about getting in and being creative and having a little fun. And if it fails, it fails. Yeah, it looks like some sort of weird little Smurf hat. <laughs> But that's okay. So there we go. That one doesn't work so well. The other thing I did was uh, I had a little bit of uh, the marshmallow left over, so I decided to just sort of freehand a little uh, egg shape here. So there's a large egg, and you could decorate it up with a little bit of chocolate rings on it. You could do um, some dehydrated strawberries sprinkled all over it. Lots of different fun things you could do with this. And there's flavors that you can add to these marshmallows as well. Uh, you can add orange rinds uh, with some ginger. What else could you do? You could put turmeric in them for really nice fun color. Turmeric and some ginger, that would be nice as well. Uh, you can use dehydrated strawberries to make sort of a pinky uh, red color. All kinds of different things and that would give it a nice little strawberry flavor as well. So lots of different ways to make up this little recipe so that you've got some fun little treats for your kiddos. And I'm just going to show you, maybe I'll use one of the not so cute ones. It's got a nice little marshmallow taste to it. Mm, nice and chewy. Those ones got a little bit hard for some reason. These guys are much fluffier. I am going to sacrifice one. So you can see it's a much fluffier marshmallow. It's sweet. You know, honestly. I've never been a big fan of marshmallows in my life, but I really like these homemade ones. They're not uh, so intensely sweet. They're really nice, and they taste really good with chocolate. You can put them on top of hot chocolate, too, since it's a cold day outside today. That might be a nice thing to do. So there you go, guys. Pretty easy stuff. Honestly, it'll take you about 15 minutes. Maybe when you get the hang of it, it'll take you a few more minutes than that. But once you get the hang of it, it's a super quick and easy thing to make, and the kids just love it. So it's fun to be able to do something like that for them, especially if they're on a super restricted protocol for their gut health and you're trying to um, help them with a chronic health condition of some kind. It's so fun to be able to give them these nice little treats. So there you go. You have questions, please make sure you post them below, and I will make sure I respond to them later and make sure that you get a copy of this recipe over in the Kids Touch Revolution community. You can get it right to your email inbox by going to www.kidstouchrevolution.com and joining the community there. And make sure that you join our wonderful private group. We have such great parents over there, a wonderful group of like-minded people on this journey to supporting our kids' health with the most basic foundational piece we can have, and that's the food we feed them. So join us over on the private Facebook page, Kids Health Revolution, for lots of support, lots of discussions, lots of information, and of course, the downloadable recipes. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. I hope your kiddos love it as much as mine do. And I look forward to joining you again next week with another episode of the School Snack Series. Take good care, guys. Bye.